as you can see, this place is pretty much unchanged from the Cold War. This is a converted missile silo. How much can this place withstand? It was engineered to withstand a 10 kiloton nuclear warhead. When it comes to the apocalypse, nothing's quite as terrifying as nuclear war. So when the nuclear apocalypse comes, are we going to get blasted back into the Stone Age? Or can we use our heads and survive the end of days with the help of technology? Here in beautiful Colorado, one man is already thinking about the end of the world. Professor Brian Toon is an atmospheric scientist and an expert on nuclear winter. Brian, level with me. How likely is an all-out nuclear war and should I be finding a bunker right now? You never know for sure because that's one of the real terrifying things here is that one person in the United States and one person in Russia could decide all by themselves to have a nuclear conflict. How many nukes are there around the world? Who, who has them? There are about 14,000 nuclear weapons in the world. More than a thousand of them are held by um, Britain, uh, France, India, Pakistan, Israel, and China. All, each of those countries has two or three hundred. Then Russia and the United States have 90% of the uh, missiles. So the lesson is everyone has nukes now. But what exactly happens when these bombs go off? If you're knocking over concrete buildings, you're going to blow people to pieces. So there's a range of going out from distance in which you die from the blast wave tearing you to pieces, the radiation burning you up, the light wave burning you or catching you on fire. What happens when day one, a week later, a year later, what are we looking at? Well, when a nuclear weapon explodes, it sends out a burst of light. It's like bringing a piece of the sun, which is nuclear explosions happening, down to the earth and that burst of light catches everything around it on fire. That fire sends huge amounts of smoke into the stratosphere, but because it doesn't rain up there, it takes years for that smoke to clear, creating a nuclear winter. Black sunlight from reaching the ground, which of course makes it cool off, it gets cold at the ground, and people expect that about 90% of the global population will die from starvation because there won't be anything to eat. The more I thought about nuclear winter, the more terrified I became. I needed a plan to survive the nuclear apocalypse before the world went to hell. So where do you go when you want to get off the grid? Kansas. Here in the heartland of rural Kansas, one man is offering millionaire preppers a high-tech way to avoid the apocalypse. Welcome to the survival condo. This former Cold War missile silo is now a luxury bunker built for the super rich. Going off the grid no longer means giving up a lavish lifestyle. Think of it kind of like cribs in camo. From the outside, the security cameras, armoured guard and eight-ton steel doors are the only sign you're entering a top secret facility. In fact, this place is so top secret, I can't even tell you where it is. I'm here to meet the man behind the condo, Larry Hall, who's going to give me a full tour. So Claire, those doors that we just came in through weigh eight tons each. So they're 16,000 pounds. They're uh, armored steel filled with concrete. So you definitely hear that safety bang when the door closes. Inside, this 54,000 square foot complex boasts everything you could need to live through the end of days. Okay, let's go down and uh, show you what's underground. Okay. Oh. You're not in Kansas anymore. We're going beneath Kansas. The survival condo is spread across 15 floors and goes 200 feet underground. 
At the top, under the dome, are the recreation facilities like the pet park and climbing wall. Underneath that are the mechanical level, medical bay and food stores, with luxury living quarters spread across the next seven floors. At the bottom, a further four floors house a classroom, a library, a bar, a gym and a cinema. All right, so I'll show you a full floor unit. This is a three bedroom, two bath unit, and they have nine foot ceilings. You see we've got all these uh, high-end uh, stainless steel appliances. And most importantly, even though I'm 11 stories underground, I've still got a window. When these are windows are all on, you come in and out of the units and you see the birds flying and the sunset coming up and the rain and the weather changing. That's the input your brain is used to. If you look in here, you can see that there's the um, bidet toilets and we have a jacuzzi tub and a shower with the side jets. Why don't you, why do you have bidet toilets instead of regular toilets? Well, interestingly, we did a little calculation and the max occupancy for this facility is 75 people. And if we put toilet paper for 75 people, for five years, that volume of toilet paper would take an entire floor to store just toilet paper. And that square footage costs about $3 million to build. Okay, so, the day it is. The day it is. The day it is. Pretty comfy. These are good yeah. mattresses. Welcome to the paradise of the beach. It's a saltwater pool. It's completely computer controlled. The pool is kept at 82 degrees. People do not expect to see a resort pool in an underground bunker. And we get drop jaws every time people, they go, are you kidding me? Another thing I wasn't expecting underground, so much space. You've got a 24 foot rock climbing wall. This is a fun room. This is an indoor shooting range. You can uh, come down here and shoot everything from handguns up to 308 caliber sniper rifles in here. So under proper supervision. Of course. So we have properly trained people. Theater and lounge level. So we have this uh, media database with about 3,000 movies on it. Anything in particular you're interested in? Do you have Armageddon? Oh, we got everything. We got that. All right, let's roll that. All right. But the apocalypse isn't all fun and games. There's a schoolroom in the bunker, so kids from K through 12 can take self-guided lessons on brand new IMAX. And because this is the 21st century, there's no worries if the internet goes out. This whole facility has an internet. And when you buy a unit here, one of the things that you fill out on your uh, form are things that are of interest to you. And what we do is we put that into a device that is like uh, a Google search engine. It goes out and it crawls over the internet and it downloads websites that have those keywords on them. They're also Skype enabled. So when we bring our second silo online, they're gonna be connected with a microwave link and the kids in this elementary classroom could see the kids in the other elementary classroom. They can talk live, and so they don't feel like they're alone. Down on the store level, there's an aquaculture setup that can be used for raising fish and hydroponics for growing organic vegetables. You can have salad daily with this kind of setup. Oh, yeah. Great. It's healthy. Yeah. yeah. So we'll, we'll have tomatoes, onions, different kinds of lettuces, some kale, uh, blueberries, strawberries, blackberries. But even without that, there's still loads, and I mean loads, of stockpiled food. This really satisfies my prepper mode inside of me. I feel very safe, surrounded by tins of food. The silo is also kitted out with high-tech equipment to keep everyone in here alive for years. Backup fuel stores, a water filtration system, and even a system that scrubs volcanic ash out of the air just in case. So if, let's say, Yellowstone were to erupt, the uh, scientists predict that we could have four to five feet of volcanic ash here. 
well, that amount of debris in the air would overwhelm our air and NBC filters. So that pre-filter would come on and it takes all of the volcanic ash out of the air. Okay, so I'm not going to die in a super volcano situation. Not here. Okay. You're good. Originally built during the Cuban Missile Crisis in the 1960s, this Atlas missile silo was designed to withstand the launch of America's ICBMs. But turns out designing something to withstand a nuclear launch also makes it really good for withstanding a nuclear blast. It took Larry Hall and his team about nine months to clear out all that missile gear before doubling the amount of concrete in the bunker and then fitting it out with the luxuries we see today. So this here is a nine foot thick reinforced wall, reinforced with steel. And this was here when they built the original missile silo. What can you throw at it? It was engineered to withstand a 10 kiloton nuclear warhead detonated within a half mile. And that would produce a shock wave that would travel 2,000 miles an hour. So it can withstand anything up to and including a 2,000 mile an hour shock wave. What's the longest I could live down underground for? It was engineered to be able to be off-grid indefinitely. We've got five different power sources, including a, a wind turbine and geothermal uh, systems. So the limit is really most practically three to five years. That may or may not be enough time to ride out the apocalypse. A nuclear winter can last for months or years. And even after that, you're returning to a world with an altered climate, a depleted ozone layer, and a drastically reduced food supply. To get an idea of just how safe it is to live inside this bunker, I visited its very low-tech cousin down the road. Here, Hall has a second missile silo earmarked for a future survival condo. But aside from the new concrete floors, this place hasn't really changed since the Cold War. This is the elevator shaft, check that out. So this is upstairs in the launch control complex in the Atlas missile silo. And as you can see, this place is pretty much unchanged from the Cold War. It's got, you can see the lights on springs so that if a missile goes off, the whole thing isn't going to shake off the ceiling. Uh, we've got a whole gap around the edge of the room so that you've got space for this floor to rattle. And right in the middle of the room, you can see this is where this is the bathrooms where back in the day you had the shift workers who could go into the bathroom here and then they lived in these quarters behind me. So you had three shifts of people uh, sleeping, resting and then manning the controls downstairs. It is so eerie to be in here. It's such a bizarre space. What kind of people have bought here? All of our people are self-made um, millionaires. They're very successful. Um, doctors, engineers, lawyers, international business people. Almost all of them have children and they're concerned about the what if scenario. Like every year it's like whether it was Superstorm Sandy or global climate change, uh, food shortages, economic collapse, meteor impacts, solar flares. You're listing and my nightmares. Exactly. If those are the kind of things that bother you, this is the kind of facility it takes to not worry about those. How much is it going to cost me? Well, the half floor units start right around a million dollars and go up to a million and a half. And then we have a full floor unit. You're going to spend uh, anywhere between two and a half and three million for a full floor. Most of us don't have a million dollars lying around to spend on a survival condo. And let's be honest, signing the deed on one of these doesn't guarantee you'll survive a nuclear winter, or any apocalyptic scenario for that matter. Luckily for the rest of us, there are thousands of innovators working on solutions to save humanity from the end of the world. I'm just going to have to keep looking for them. Larry Hall, we're in the survival condos, but I'm 30. No, I'm not. When it bangs outside, make sure you have bang inside. If I see you walking backwards when we're downstairs, 
you're gonna get kicked out. I don't wanna hear you like trying to read me your will while you're falling to the bottom. I didn't feel scared walking downstairs before, but now I've seen the drop, I've become very aware of my own mortality. 